tedious uh, boilerplate we need to read. So welcome everybody to the uh, September 2nd monthly meeting of the Fairfax County History Commission. I'm Ann Stunts and it's great to see and hear you all. So to begin, I'll just read off the computer. To conduct this meeting wholly electronically and to effectuate both the emergency procedures authorized by FOIA and the emergency ordinance, this board needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. It's a bit cumbersome, so I ask you for your patience. First, because each member of this board is participating in this meeting from a separate location, we must verify that a quorum of members is participating and that each member's voice is clear, audible, and at an appropriate volume for all the other members. Accordingly, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each board member participating in this meeting to state your name and the location from which you are participating. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. Following this roll call, we will vote to establish that every member can hear every other member. <clears throat> so I will just pull up the list of people, which is hiding over here. And I think I'll just make it up. Um, just got a list handy. Mine is not coming up. Um, oh, I know we can do, I'll look at the minutes from last time and we'll read it off of there. Okay. Um, Sorry for my pause. All right, someone who's not me, would you please find a list and and do the roll call for me? You want me to do it? I, I'm looking at the uh, minis. I can. Uh, that's, that, would be, that would be lovely. Thank you so much. So I'm I'm going to read it as I have it on my minis from last my last minutes because that's what I have open. Okay, thank you. I have Mary Lipsy. She did Mary Lipsy. Mary. Uh -huh. <coughs> in Springfield. Mary, okay. can you talk a little louder? Mary Lipsy in Springfield. Okay, Mark, Gretchen. When, when you're ready, you'll want to talk more loudly when you're talking. Hi, Gretchen Oliver from Fairfax. Kara Herrick. Carol's on the phone. She's on the phone? Okay. Carol, uh, we need to be able to hear her. Yeah. yeah. Carol. Carol. Can you unmute yourself? Carol. Let's come back to her. Okay. She's here. Then we have Greg Wilson. Greg Wilson is here in Great Falls. Okay. And Barbara Nath. Barbara Nath. Barbara. Barbara. I saw her. So. Unmute yourself, Barbara. Barbara is in Reston. Okay. And Stunts. I'm here just outside Vienna, Virginia. Okay, Steve Sherman. Uh, Steve Sherman in Franconia. Okay, Phyllis Walker Ford. Phyllis Ford, Clifton. Okay, Tammy Manorino. I'm here near Mount Vernon. Okay, uh, Lynn Garvey Horch. 
Okay, I was so should I put absent? Yeah. I have not seen no, she, should be, she should be on later, I think. She might be running late. Okay, and uh, Jordan Tenenbaum. Jordan Tenenbaum. I have not seen him either, Winifred. Okay. Um, Esther McCullough. Esther McCullough, Herndon, Virginia. Okay. Um, Bob Beach. Bob Beach. Okay, for now I'm gonna put absent. And uh, David Mayer. Or, um, we got a bunch of his songs. David Mayer. Okay, I'm gonna put absent for now. And Bonds. Andy Barnes from Mount Vernon area. Okay. Um, Sally Lyons. Uh, I'm here in Nice and Neck. Okay. Elise, Elise Murray. Elise Murray. Okay. I don't see Elise, yeah. I put absent for a while, for now. And Barbara Peters. Uh, I thought I heard someone saying she was trying to get on. Did she get on? I don't I see her listed. She was having electricity problems. Okay. So um, those are the names I have. I, I, don't, I don't think I left anything. I, I just followed the uh, What about Cheryl? You missed me. Cheryl, oh yes, I just skipped her. Cheryl and Rapetti. I'm, I'm here in Centerville. Okay. Did Sorry. Care? <laughs> if, if, if I miss roll call, it's Herrick and McLean. Okay, we got you. Thank you, Carol. Okay, this is it. This, that's the list. Okay. Um, Diana Hintzabong from the Heritage Conservation Branch is also here. Pardon me? Um, Diana Inthabong, I wasn't on the list. Um, I'm from the Heritage Conservation Branch and I'm here from Anna Dill. Oh, hi, Diane. Thanks. Hi there. We'll get to you guys in a little bit. And can oh, I grab for just a moment? There's a caller on the line and I'm not sure who it is. Hi. Uh, let's see. Nope. They had dropped off. I just oh. had a phone call from Lynn. Okay. So she may be. Uh, arriving shortly if it works. Bob Beach just jumped on. Okay, so let me Bob, put him express it. Can we can we hear Bob? Bob, can you unmute yourself? Bob Beach. I can see him, but I can't hear him. We had a um well we'll talk about this later in my chairman's remarks if I remember. Okay. okay. Oh look, I see Lynn. Can we hear Lynn? Yes, I had a heck of a time getting in. Chrome wouldn't let me, but you don't need to hear my story. It was just so Lynn is calling from um, Fairfax County. And I haven't heard Bob's voice yet. And Jordan just emailed me and said he's having difficulty logging in as well. Okay. Yeah, I see, I see Bob, but I don't hear him. We haven't heard you yet, Bob. Bob, can you try calling in? Do you need the number? <laughs> chat. You can you can answer it in the chat. I'll just email it to you right now. All right. So I think we can. Do you think we can move on as we because uh, some of this is very rote, and we have enough people to hear. If Bob can sort himself out. Um. And I'll be in and out because it's Clifton's meeting tonight too. So just know I'm I'm okay. here. Um, 
All right. Well, I would say, Denise, if if it's okay with you, we could uh, I could make a motion now while we're sorting out one or two more people uh, that each member's voice so far, each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of this board. Is there a second? Second. This is Esther. Esther. And uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All, aye. all opposed, aye. nay. Any abstentions? Second, having established that each member's voice may be heard by every other member, we was, must next establish the nature of the emergency that compels these emergency procedures. The fact that we are meeting electronically, what type of electronic communication is being used, and how we have arranged for public access. Therefore, hey, wait, I didn't give the virtual gavel to our vice chairman. Let's, let's say I did that before that first motion. Um, therefore, I move that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this board to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically attend any such meeting. And as, as such, FOIA's usual procedures, which require the physical assembly of this board and the physical presence of the public, cannot be implemented safely or practically. I further move that this board may conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated telephone line and that the public may access this meeting by WebEx virtual meeting. Attendee call in 1408-418-9388, event number 129-068-3652. It is so moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, Herrick. Uh, all in favor? Say all. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Just any nays? Attention. Finally, it is next required that all of the matters addressed in today's agenda must address the state of emergency itself or are necessary for continuity of, and or are necessary for Fairfax County government and or statutorily required or necessary to continue operations and the discharge of this board's lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. It is so moved. Do I hear second? Second. 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 Who won that one? Barbara. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? May I have the gavel back? Where is Jordan? Welcome to WebEx. Okay. Access code or meeting number. Next, uh, Chairman's remarks. So, so somebody just jumped on. Jordan, is that you? you hear me? I, yes. I saw a pop on my screen. Can you so hear Jordan, me? Jordan just came in. Can you hear me? Good. Yeah, we got gotcha. you. Your entry well, um, three, five, yeah, I, five, four. So the only person I cannot hear is Bob Beach, and he may have something to say. So uh, could some would someone be in a position to text him or email him? So and I emailed him the number for calling in. Okay. Are you are you did you guys have trouble with WebEx tonight? Yes, many people yes. did. Okay, so people are calling in? Yes. About five okay. or six are calling in. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I would, um, I'm going to try something. I'm going to try something for the next meeting. Now, this is my chairman's remarks. I'm going to say some formal things that I always say, but um, what I was also thinking that because um, it's taken us, you know, a good 15, 20 minutes to get through this um, boilerplate stuff and make sure we've got everybody. Um, I know, Denise, you've been turning on the, the call at quarter two, haven't you? Yes. So I, I recommend anybody who can to just turn on their computer and try to sort out... Um, sort out some of the problems 
uh, ahead of time. I mean, you can sit there and eat, turn off the camera and finish your dinner and and do do whatever you're doing at home. But it'd be good if I, I, I've never achieved getting here at quarter two yet, but I think it would do us all good to try to just keep the meeting a little shorter, uh, <clears throat> which I know we all want to do. All right, so these other things, just to remind ourselves, the technical suggestions, I think we know this stuff. The meeting's being recorded and will be posted to our website tomorrow. Uh, do keep yourself on mute when you're not speaking. Uh, I like how this says to avoid hot mic moments. Um, but then, of course, we have to remember to turn ourselves back on. And then you know how to use the chat function. And um, and you can use that for technical issues, but not to discuss business. And then the whole issue of getting everybody getting attention to speak, that one's always a hard one because we're not always looking at the chat or at, I can't even remember how to raise a hand. Is there, is there a hand raise? Um, but I think we just, wave our arms around and speak up. I was in a meeting the other day where I was only looking at one screen and of course we were two screens worth and there were people on the other screen who were quietly waving their hands around and nobody saw them and it was very frustrating. Okay, so that's that. Uh, we have got commissioners excused. I. I think everyone was going to try to come. If Barbara Peters is in here, it's because of her lack of electricity. Um, is there is there uh, anybody else who said no? Um, Winifred, who we should. Well, you'll make a note of it, um, but hopefully everybody's being able to get on today. Um, I, I wrote down, I wrote the introductions a little different. I wrote sort of guest staff so that we can pick up and make sure who we've got. We know we have in the room, we have Diane, um, we have Liz, we have Denise, we have, we have Rachel listening. Hi, Rachel, and welcome. And who is, uh, who is Rachel? Huh? Rachel, Rachel Flynn. Oh, you can, I'm sorry. You, you, yeah, can I, look, I, you can look on participants. You've got Chris Barbashak okay. and Laura Wickstead. Did I miss? And Winifred, of course. So welcome to all of you guys, part of the team. And next, ah, minutes. I think we are on to Winifred's minutes. Uh, so let's have a look at those. Did everybody have a chance to get back to her? This is for August 5th. Uh, this is Esther. I, I move am. that we accept the minutes for August 5th and pay the clerk. Is I'll there, second it. Well, whose voice was that? Miss Tammy. Tammy. Okay, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that's good. All right. Can I jump in here? Yep. Bob, are you on the line now? We got a third. Yes, I am. There we go. I'm here. Oh, yeah. good. We got you back. Welcome, Bob. I know you, right. you've you been there, but we haven't heard your voice. Um, <laughs> Quiet as a church mouse. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so unfinished business. Uh, no. Treasurer's report. We don't have one. We um, Barbara received today uh, the report for July and August, and uh, there were a lot of questions, so she didn't have an opportunity to sort it out in time for this meeting. So she'll give us a report at our September meeting. Um, because it's a big month. You figure uh, you, we get we get our, our budget for uh, the new fiscal year to, this last month or the month before. OK, unfinished business. Barbara Nath, you are on. 
All right. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> um, this is a, a quick report, and we had our our um, August the August nineteenth minutes of the CNC will be posted after approval at our next CNC meeting, which is please note September 9th. That's a week from today, um, and so they will be posted on um, our the CNC page of the History Commission. Um, I wanted to note that Chris was in attendance at that meeting. We discussed and voted to include the sesquicentennial brochure as an artifact um, and in digital form and the addenda of the report. Um, we and also um, because it offers a visual summary of the war in Fairfax County. So I completed a um, short narrative today and sent it on to Denise um, for the report, the background of it. Um, we also discussed the methodology employed in developing the short list of Confederate names and voted to approve that. We reviewed and discussed in great detail the instructions for recording research results. And I want to offer here Denise's phrase that I keep using, which is that we are, because of the time constraints, um, we are doing project design as we're doing the project. So um, I, I get. Uh, many questions from everybody, and I appreciate everybody's patience. And everyone approaches research in a different way, so I think we're doing well. Um, we also received status reports from the CNC um, members at the meeting, and I thought I'd offer one comment. Um, then um, Anne shared with all of us Supervisor Alcorn's Hunter Mill update communication, in which he referred to our work and refer and and the fact that there would be future consideration by the BOS of what he called deconfederatizing, confederatizing, can't even say, of the county. Um, he also offered a concluding statement that I found encouraging, and that was, during these discussions, they will enjoy the benefits of a more robust understanding of our local history. And that is what we, in our role as, as clerks, that's what we are providing. And so I wanted to make a note of that. I also wanted to um, go on the record of thanking Chris, which um, again for today, he said he, he completed all of the work that was needed in Springfield District. I've shared the results of his, of his work. Uh, I sent it to Jordan and to Lynn um, late afternoon. So Chris, thank you so very much. It's, um, yeah, thank you. Done. Well, second that, second that uh, Barbara. Okay, that's all I have, Ann. Okay, that sounds good. What else were we going to do? Am I on next? Or no, Denise. Who's on next to talk about? Um, uh, we're staying with Confederate names, and we're supposed to talk about uh, maybe have everyone consulting sort of parties. Next is um, consulting parties, Anne. Oh, no, I, I, that's right. Um, I know that is the next item, but is as, as we stick with, um, if we stick for just a moment with Confederate names. Was there anything else that uh, besides this report that you wanted anyone else to say, Barbara, um, with respect to the Confederate names project? On, under staff report, De Denise is available to answer questions, um, technical questions with regards to the work we're being we're done. And um, I know that you at some point were going to ask um, the commissioners to advise where everyone is. All right, so that would be. I'm just, that's, that's, I'm passing it on to you. Okay. I just I think that's next then. Because okay. while we're on it, let's go ahead and do it. So uh, so with respect to Hunter Mill. That is uh, that is Barbara and Elise and me, and we are working uh, diligently, and we're at least up to the seas, you know. But we we can use the inspiration of Chris and everybody else who's much further along, and uh, we'll get past the D's before too long. Okay. That's Hunter Mill. Let's hear from Drainsville, Carol, and Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Um, so I think, uh, and uh, at least from my perspective, we com uh, com completed all the um, work for Drainsville. Carol took the streets. I took everything else. 
um, and, have, and have sent that in. Um, and at Barbara's request, I've also done a, a first draft of an of a introduction on the Civil War in Fairfax Courthouse. Nice. Or in Fairfax County, sorry. <clears throat> nice. Carol, anything to add? It sounds like you guys are on top of it. Yeah, we're pretty much done here. Good. Um, I'd like to hear from Mary and Gretchen in Braddock. This is Mary. Uh, we have, uh, I've completed the markers. I believe there's 102 markers, memorials, plaques, et cetera, and both uh, Denise and Barbara have the templates for that. Um, let me time, let me stop you for a second. If there's a speaker you could speak closer to or louder to, I mean a microphone, I think that would help. Uh, there's, I know that um, the recording is, is hard for um, Winifred to hear sometimes. Is this better? Mm, hardly. How about, Any better? how about now? All right, everybody just turn up your stuff if, it, if that helps. Uh, okay, good. All right. Okay, I just said that I've done the markers, memorials, plaques, and there were 102 of them, if I counted correctly, uh, throughout the county. Uh, I have started Braddock District, and in the process of doing that, found two subdivisions with about 20 streets each, all connected with the Civil War. So I'm doing all those together as a subdivision, um, rather than individual uh, templates. And then I'm working my way through the Braddock um, street names. What's that neighborhood called? My neighborhood, Ravensworth, and the other one is Signal Hill, which is on Rolling Road, off of Rolling Road. Neat. That was a good find. Um, okay, good. Thank you, Mary and Gretchen. Um, now let's do Lee District with Stephen Phyllis. Okay, uh, Chris, Phyllis, you want to do the report? Mm -hmm. um, Chris has completed all of the streets in Lee District, and uh, now we have about four subdivisions that we're looking at, and we should be complete after that. This is such an interesting project. Thank you, Phyllis. Uh, Mason, I don't guess Barbara was able to get on. Um, she's been working diligently. And uh, and I think she's been uh, pulling in the Virginia room also, or if she hasn't, she will. Uh, Mount Vernon, Tammy, Ann, and Sally. Been we've been uh, plugging along. I um I have a few more um, lists that I need to send to um to Sally and Ann to get the review on um, and I'm tackling the streets right now. Some of it I've already covered because there's overlap in the different sections. So I feel like I'm at the beginning of the end. That's good. <laughs> These are some good stories. Thank you. Um, okay, that was Tammy. We don't have a Providence, but we're getting help from uh, Sue Kovach to Schumann and, uh, and the Virginia room and maybe some other ones of us who know Providence. Um, Springfield, I think you've just heard that uh, the Virginia room has saved the day. Um, I'll just talk real quick, and uh, I'm actually only halfway done with Springfield. As, as much as I'd love to be completely done, I just started working on the street names today, but uh, about half of it's done. Like to, we should be a fly on the wall watching you work your way through all this to inspire us. Um, you could put, yeah, you just turn your microphone on, that would work. Okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, Sully is Cheryl and Esther. So I've been working on it. I've, it's a little hard for me to tell you in terms of the progress because I've been working by subdivision rather than by. Uh, the street names, but I did sit down the other day and start to fill in that selected, you know, street names. And assuming that a lot of the foxes are really just foxes, um, <laughs> I, I would estimate them about a third of the way to approaching a half. 
and um, I don't know that there's a lot more to be done in terms of of street names. And Esther and I are trying to um, coordinate, you know, sharing the the research, the remaining research tasks. Okay, great. And uh, did David Meyer get on the phone? No, too bad. But we heard that was good hearing from him last uh, last month, and hearing how Fairfax City has been uh, has approached it. Oh, let's see. Oh, and uh, yeah, I think that's everybody. Yeah. All right. So the next thing, if we're done with Confederate names, until we get to, uh, we'll bring it up one more time under. Um, staff report, let's look at the consulting parties task force and you all will have received the minutes of the um, uh, of the consulting parties task force and they're also online and the beauty. So Bob, this is over to you if you've got them in front of you. Yes, I don't have it in front of me. That's a part of them looking for it. So it's posted on the website. So I'll get started and then you jump in when you when you find it. So the um, the meeting on July 15 led to a motion that for the commission to consider the following. So this is a motion uh from bob and the committee as follows the fairfax count this is a policy to con fit to consider maybe it's not a motion yet right now this is a policy for you to listen to and then the, you guys can decide what to do with it the fairfax county history commission will notify in writing the chairman of the fairfax county board of supervisors BOS and the supervisor of the affected magisterial district when it has been invited and agreed to become a consulting party in accordance with section 802 C of the U.S. Advisory Council on Historic Preservation's Regulations 36 CFR Part 800 implementing section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966. The commission further agrees to keep the chairman of the board of supervisors and the supervisor of the affected magisterial district informed of its motion throughout the section 106 review process. Okay. I mean, I, I read that last month, right? Correct. So uh, the question would be, uh, we, we are asking the commission to consider <clears throat> it at its meeting. To adopt this policy. Well, I guess that's a motion. Do we need a second? So I second. Okay. All right. I'll any, second, Eric. Are there any questions or discussion on this? <clears throat> well, I probably uh, have a little bit of discussion. Go on. Do um, you want to talk? Go on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, it says we're going to do a policy or have a policy, correct? We need to yeah. write that policy. So the committee needs to stay in force and, and do that work. Um, that this is a policy. This is the it's described that this is the policy that your committee passed. And then um, to act on that, uh, they will. We're going to recommend that if, if that passes, then you moving down in the minutes, you would recommend an amendment to the bylaws committee and Yeah, I understand that that, that gets that moved forward. <clears throat> I'm just saying that once we do move that forward, the commission has to have a protocol for, you know, how it's going to oh, process yeah. this, how it's going to work. Yeah. That's how all I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. like passing a law and needing a regulation to implement it. I get it. Correct. Yeah. yeah, we'll just, we'll have a little more further work to do. So just to be identifying, you know, if this is how it's going to proceed, what are the, what are the steps in the protocol to, you know, first, second, yeah, third, fourth, good. how we keep the Board of Supervisors abreast of what's going on and, and how, what's the proper communication between 
business. So I mean, that's a delicate subject, but you know, if we put ourselves in that position, we need to have a protocol so everybody's you know following that, working on the same page. That's right, because um, otherwise, right. otherwise things can fall through the cracks. Yeah, or you can do something wrong and really ruffle some feathers. Yes, and that's not good either. Okay. Any other any questions or comments for Bob and the committee? If there aren't any, let's go ahead and call the question. Uh, all in favor of Did I hear something? Did, did we hear anything? Uh, if nope, not, just keep going. What? Just keep going. Okay. Uh, let's uh, all in favor of adopting this policy, please say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Any abstentions? No. I have one question. Who moved? Do you did you, you moved? No, I don't move. No. Uh, maybe Bob. Robert D did. She okay. just read it for me. All right. I, I moved it. We're all there's so many bits of paper in our lives, we have to the first person who finds it gets to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bits Thank of you, papers in a computer files. Oh my gosh. Um, and then I can't remember if we're supposed to uh, the committee is recommending an amendment to the bylaws committee. So I think that's 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 done. That's done. So when the bylaws committee has its chance to go over the bylaws in the fall, they will take this into account. Okay, that one's done. Now, Anne. Yes. This is Anne Barnes. I have a question. Sorry, I probably should have spoken a little bit earlier. But who is the chairman of the committee that's going to make a recommendation to the bylaws committee? Who who's making that recommendation? Bobby. And, okay. Okay. And, Bob. and, and there's uh -huh. there's specific language, Anne. It's in the um, posted minutes of the consulting parties task force. It's okay. I, I, we'll sort that out later. But I just wanted to know who it was that I was expecting to get something from. Yeah. Yeah. It's me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Page. Thank you. It's um. It's a. It's a whole like twelve words that they're recommending that you add to the bylaws. So that's good. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was good. Um. Next is oh oh shit. Here we go. Wait a second. I just I got so many documents open. Brimstone, oh, this is for Jordan to just update us on the last thing that happened on Brimstone Hill Monopole. Can you hear me, Ann? Yes. Okay, good, great. Can you see me? Yes. Good. Even better. All right, so uh, the last thing that happened was, as you recall, in our meeting last time, um, I was advised that by Denise, I think the Fairfax, um, the Fairfax County um, history folks had historic resources had decided that there was no effect. The SHPO for Virginia came in and said, yeah, okay, we looked at the additional height and we decide no effect. So um, it seemed to me that that was the way to go. And I wrote a letter, an email, sent an email to, and, uh, uh, to uh, the folks that were dealing with there, letting them know that the commission had officially determined no effect as well. And they seem to, of course, be satisfied with that. And I think that was the right call. I really do. Okay. Good. Thank you for that. So that's done. McLean Old Firehouse, Carol. Carol wrote, drafted a nice letter that we wrote to, the, as we said we were going to do at the last meeting. We wrote a letter to the chairman of the McLean Central Business uh, District. Carol, any uh, anything further? No, except when I sent out a notice to the uh, McLean Historical Society about um, the change in the text uh, to the plan, um, I got at least six people who said they would write letters. So 
So that would be nice. Mm -hmm. Well, really, any of us, what's the timing? Any of us who are inspired to write a letter, uh, it's it's a very... I think we should do it fairly quickly. Yeah. Is my understanding. We now know everybody's email address who's appropriate. That was its own project. Um, So if anybody wants to do that, talk to me or to Carol, because that would be good. Just the more voices they hear, and we're in a position uh, to care and to know a little something about how wonderful, even in a big, glitzy, new, or maybe especially in a big, glitzy, new redesign, how wonderful it will be to have a small-scale, wonderful piece of history. Uh, well, the, well, the point here is that um, uh, they're redeveloping downtown McLean, and they are eliminating everything, that's with a capital E, that has to do with history. And this is the only thing that I can put my teeth into to get them to save. So uh, McLean will have no history in downtown McLean. They've been, they've been erasing it for years, haven't they? Well, they're gonna they're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, part of a trend. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Uh, and then the last thing of unfinished business is to uh, let you know that uh, Greg drafted a wonderful letter to the Army Corps of Engineers and asked for a consulting parties meeting. Any anything else, Greg? No, I just wanted to thank uh, both Jordan and you for the help and, and assist, and we'll look forward to see what the response is. I I finally went by and looked at it on Sunday. What a sad thing to lose. I love that house. It my really mother, is. My mother said she wants to move it to Vienna. I said, too <laughs> late and too far. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Uh, over to you, Jordan. Talk to us about the Rosenwald schools. Jordan, you have to unmute yourself. Did you want to mention, thank you, Denise. Did you want to mention, uh, Anne, before I go into that, uh, that you received, um, you both received an email from Simpkins today for soapstone it's just oh do tell yes i forgot yeah i mean i didn't really forget it slipped my mind yeah would you would you tell sure of course yeah so it's an interim reply basically he said he reiterated that um and denise i think you got probably got a copy too that uh the 4f process is in motion that they're looking at alternatives very it was a very uh short letter short email and that they would get back to us when they had that job finished. But basically, that's where they were. And so that is that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Right. Yeah. yeah. OK, so the new the new business. Um, you'll see that you have a copy of some legislation, both the House versions and the Senate version, and a group of, of uh, a listing of the, individ- of the organizations, individuals, that have supported uh, an initiative that is working its way through Congress to, to establish a national historical park uh, uh, honoring Julius Rosenwald and the Rosenwald schools. Uh, we have been working, I sit on the board um, of this initiative. We've been working tirelessly on this for about three years and um, and are very excited about the prospects of this. I think it's a, uh, I, I don't think it's very controversial. The issue for the Park Service initially was, was it going to mean that they had to spend a lot more money to maintain it? And um, and I think that we have we begun to resolve that. Uh, the park would be a, a, dis, a non-contiguous park, obviously, and it would, it would take in about 10 or 15. That hasn't been determined. Obviously, that would be determined in the legislation. Rosenwald schools throughout the South. The headquarters would be in Chicago. That's appropriate because that's where Julius Rosenwald had his business, Sears and Roebuck. And um, and then um, we're looking now for some space for that visitor center. There'd be uh, some kind of visitor center. Uh, But we are we are now garnering support from organizations for this. And 
uh, I guess David's not on. David Myers uh, is working, has prepared a, um, uh, a, a has prepared a, a document that would that would indicate support by Fairfax City. If that is approved, Fairfax City would be the first municipality to approve oh. this. And uh, David's huh. working diligently on it. Very excited about that. And it would be very helpful to have, as we have in Fairfax County, at least one, maybe two, maybe more Rosenwald schools. Um, the, our organization, uh, I, I'm hoping that our organization would agree to uh, approve a resolution supporting this legislation. Questions? Yes, Dan, Barbara. Dan, I so move. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I want to note that if if you look at the list, um, many of the major public public history organizations nationally are on the list, and I recommended to Jordan that he um, contact the American Association of State and Local History because this is and and for us now to be in support of this, particularly with one Fairfax and all this that's going on, I think it's absolutely very very timely. Yeah. This is Esther. Yes. I sir. second the motion. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? I just have a comment that um, I think this was part of the um, the History Commission conference a couple of years ago. We had a speaker, correct? It was excellent. Yeah. I thought it was yes, really well we done. Did. Yeah. So very yeah. supportive. Yeah. And also, Bob Stanton, who spoke to us, uh, was it last year? Uh, Bob is on this committee. Bob? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, neat. Okay. Any more Great. questions or, or comments? What? Who? Who is it? Was it part of the? Um, it was a part of the celebration of Fairfax County that they actually had the film in Fairfax City. Oh. You, does anybody? I went. I, I think Lynn went. I'm not sure who all was there. Uh, Anne, you were there. You sat right next to me. That's the second Sunday program. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. That or whatever it was, it was the it was a film of the. That's where I learned the most about Julius Rosenwald. It's wonderful. So, yeah. Yeah. okay. Anything else? I'll, I'll, let's go ahead and call the question. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 And and you're good with you're good with the motion. Um, this, of course, the establishment of Julius Rosenwald. Rosenwald Schools National Historic Park. Okay, did you hear that enough, uh, Winifred? Winifred, I'm happy to work with you on the, on the language. Thank you. Okay, yeah. good. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. Will that take the form of a letter from the chair? Yes, I think I think it would, and I can I'd be happy to draft a letter for the chair. So can we amend that motion to to put that wording in there? Support by by sending a letter from the chair. Okay. So do, do we have to vote secretary after secretary here? Do we have to vote after an amendment like that that came after the vote, or does everybody just collect this? Well, I'm asking for a friendly change. Okay. I think Jordan is agreeing, but did this did uh, Winifred get it? Yeah, I would li I would listen again to the recording. To get it. And if I have any can you hear me? Yes. Uh, if I have any question, Commissioner Tenenbaum is very responsive. So I, I shouldn't have any I shouldn't have any problem with that. <laughs> very good, Jordan. Great. Well, you. it's not everybody who gets those kudos. You. <laughs> okay. Um, good. That's that's it for uh, new business, and we shall move on to staff reports, starting with Liz. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with the archaeology collection staff report. Um, our team, which is made up of planners. Um, staff from heritage conservation and staff from archaeology. Um, the team is in the process of reviewing plans for the proposed collections facility. And currently, there are two alternatives under consideration. Um, we commented on that uh, earlier this week, and we have an upcoming meeting 
to discuss that. Uh, the team are, is planning to go to the Architecture Review Board in October, and um, I have asked that they come to the History Commission, and it will probably be in November because I imagine they would want to go to the Architectural Review Board first. So probably in November, um, be a presentation to the History Commission. As well as part of the collections facility, um, because it is adjacent to the, um, the historic district at Laurel Hill, um, it under um, the provisions of the MOA, um, it's treated as if it's a historic overlay district. And since it's adjacent to the historic district, um, it is, um, we're doing archaeology in compliance with the zoning ordinance. So Amy Wells and a team of archaeologists have been out there working on that uh, prior. I mean, it's a while till construction, but to basically um, get that uh, work done ahead of time. Other things that we're doing, um, we're part of a team of, uh, that is um, going to be meeting on some improvements on Route 28. We have an upcoming meeting in the next week. Um, as well, we've been working with developers on a series of proposed developments with archeological potential. Um, these, Some of these are things that Mike Johnson made comments on 20 years ago, and then you're having to go back and see how things have changed. Um, other things we have been working um, on a couple of cemetery issues. Um, we're continuing the archaeological field work that I've talked to you about um, at Riverbend and at Mount Air. And um, the only other thing I wanted to say is um, one of the it, if you can see any kind of uh, benefit coming out of the pandemic, it's been the degree to which um, different groups have been embracing technology. And as a result, there have been a series of really timely webinars in addressing a whole series of um, historical and archeological subjects. And I've been participating in a great number of those and I'd be glad to, if I hear of anything, to pass it along to the group if you might be interested. That's all for me. Thank you. That sounds very interesting, the webinars. Yeah. I, I can pass that along to the group, including some things that happened already but are available, um, are taped and available. Oh, wonderful. That'd be yeah. great. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Who we got? Is it Diane next? Yep, that's me. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, from Museum Collections, the collections manager submitted the August Artifacts blog, which highlights a portrait of Emma Millard from Colvin Mill Run, or Colton Run Mill, I'm sorry. Um, the collections manager, uh, she continues to reconcile locations for objects placed back into Sully Historic Site. Um, the collections manager also continues to spend increasing amounts of time providing subject matter expert information to the collection storage facility project and attend a systematic design meeting on um, August 21st. From operations and maintenance projects, um, staff continues to work with DPMM on the Ashgrove kitchen stabilization project. Um, we've also completed filming with channel 16 for the Oak Hill virtual tour. Production and storyboarding is currently underway. Um, the project is on schedule for a final product at the end of September, so pretty soon. Um, staff is still working with WJE on treatment plans for the outbuildings at Sully Historic Site. Staff is also moving forward with WJE on a treatment plan and historic structures report for Mount Gilead. Um, with our volunteers, the HSBC had a successful event with the Young Men's Service League at the beginning of August. Volunteers helped pull out carpet from the second floor of Ashgrove. Um, also, the next HSBC volunteer event will be a landscape cleanup on Saturday, September 12th at Leahy Lost Valley in Vienna. 
Um, so now we are back on our regular schedule of volunteer events every second Saturday of the month. And that's all I got. Thank you, Diane. Any questions? So I bet you they'd be glad to have any of us come out and help on the, every second Saturday. So be sure and put that in your calendars once you've finished your Confederate names. <laughs> okay, um, thank you. All right, so we are over to the Virginia Room. Well, it's been research central in the Virginia Room over the last month. Uh, we've been fielding questions not just from the public, but just about everybody here. Um, we've been uh, helping out DPD and, and Denise and Laura um, with several questions on developments. And I uh, mentioned to Denise earlier this month that we should all just be in the same building together. <laughs> it's things. almost like that The way now. Look at us all. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, our priority right now, though, is, is what you've tasked us with, which is the Confederate naming research uh this past month just as a recap um we worked with phyllis so we knocked out the lee district street names together uh, we've assisted barbara peters with the mason district um sue schumann reached out to us so we're going to start collaborating together on providence district next week and we are solely working on springfield district so jordan and lynn will hope to make you proud and that's mm -hmm. it we'll do our best i'm so sorry i'm majorly overwhelmed but it's okay it's it's all right the, the good news thank is we have no streets in clifton <laughs> <laughs> and thank you and lynn and i are profoundly grateful for your work chris this, this is a very cool collaboration there's never been anything quite like it yeah. and i'm so grateful chris that i just said you'd finished it all even though you haven't so <laughs> your laurels your laurels are there already <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was done. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got a half hour to finish up in the morning. <laughs> All right. Uh, is that it, Chris? That's it. Brief report. We've just been okay. researching. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's just you can't talk about it all, no matter how juicy it is. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Denise. Over to you. Hi, everybody. Hi. Like Anne, I have so many tabs open. It's which one do I? Think? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I think I was supposed to give you a brief update about the uh, draft outline. Is, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that that was what I was supposed to do, but I'm happy to uh not go over it and at, just ask if there are any questions about it rather than going line by line have you all seen it it was it was sent out and it's um posted on the web page is that the time frames the report yes. time frames yep. Yep. Gotcha. yep were there any questions um there are time frames that means there are due dates uh, most of those due dates are what we had agreed upon that first or uh, second Friday in um, October. But it sounds like huge progress is being made now that you all have all of the lists and have the support of the Virginia room. So I don't think we're going to have trouble meeting that deadline. Okay, well, it, it is. A, a, it, <laughs> I, let me say if if you haven't looked at this timeline. Um, it's, it's the one it's posted and it's called Confederate names, inventory report timeframes and more than a time frame, It is an outline, like it's an outline of the report and it shows you a very thoughtful structure of how it's going to hang together with a beginning, a middle and end. It's, um, it makes it come alive and makes it real. And I think it's, uh, if you haven't looked at it, you'll be glad you did. Thank you, Anne. Yes, that, that's exactly why I tried to um, to put something together so we could just sort of visualize what this thing is going to, to look like beyond just a list of names, yeah. um, you know, the, the, the background information. So many 
things had come up and, and I'll give you an example, like how you deal with the family names. And um, I knew that we wanted to have at least, um, you know, to respond to that. And, and I, um, and there were other things that have come up along the way. So I just created this outline. It is, it is a draft and I emphasize it's a draft. So if anybody um, has anything that they'd like to talk to me about, please, you know, let me know. Um, but it, I, I do think that um, it, it will help focus us and keep us uh, moving toward the end goal, which is this, this product that we're supposed to give to the Board of Supervisors. Good. Okay, um, great. Thank you so much. We, we don't have to go over it in detail and, and that's probably best for all of us since we're uh, living, swimming, breathing, dreaming, Civil War names. Um, okay, hey, so Denise, Greg, Greg. Yes. Hi, Greg, yes. Uh, just one quick question. Um, you have Mary and me down for the list of identified Confederate names, the methodology. Can, can you give us a clue what you're looking for there? Is it just a couple paragraphs on how we yeah. came up with those lists or what, what do you need? So I've been in dialogue with Mary about that. I don't know if Mary would like to speak to that or, or maybe you both have questions. I'm happy to send you what I was, um, you know, our conversation, my conversation with Mary. So you're included in that. For some reason, I think, Greg, we might have been having a difficulty getting in touch with you. Maybe you e were having difficulty with the email. Um, so we, we just, you know, Mary and I started talking um, between the two of us. But okay. I think, and, yes. I'm in, and I'm in conversation with Mary as well. In fact, we have a, a tentative meeting tomorrow. And um, yes, and Greg, I'm not ignoring you. I just can't seem to get your information back. It's more IT issues. So we can share okay. with us where as we are. Okay. <laughs> Robert, we have a tentative meeting tomorrow. You and I. Tomorrow morning, Mary. We'll talk. I didn't know. <laughs> All right. Um, just it's on your email. It's on your email when you it came so late before the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, Greg, there's a couple of the uh, things in the inventory. I, I've given Denise and Barbara the sources uh, that I know of, like Fairfax Rifles and the cemetery database. But there are a couple of them I wasn't sure of what the source information is. And I sent you an email, I believe, about that. Um, so I will try and send my email with the source information and you can see what's there and what holes there are. Okay, I, I, if, if you sent one to me, Mary, I didn't get it. I have all that source data in my Excel sheet that everybody should have, but I'll, I'll take a look at your email. I'll send it later on. I'll send it later on this evening. Okay. Okay. Um, so staff report, a group one in the BRT section 106 staff forwarded the commission, the most recent comments and findings from F FTA and FCDOT regarding the section 106 consultation for route one in the BRT project. Uh, for the purposes of this undertaking, the Gum Springs historic district will be treated as eligible for listing in the national register of historic places and the Virginia landmarks register. As has been previously established, uh, DPDHR will be compiling comments from the ARB and the History Commission and attaching them to county staff's response memo. Please review um, the information that was sent and uh, send me any comments no later than Wednesday, September 9th. Thank you uh, to Commissioner Manorino who has already provided comments. These will be attached to staff comments, which will be sent on Friday, uh, September 11th. And I think there was going to be some discussion about whether there needs to be a formal letter or whether we'll just be collecting individual comments. We've done it both ways for this project. I'm, I'm happy to study the History Commission and whatever you all decide. I, um, I could see us writing to you or this one we did that way right this one we wrote you a letter or a memo from the history commission and you incorporated that i think That's because the history commission isn't um it doesn't have consulting party status yeah. that, so that I, I, guess think, I think that would be stronger you tell me you tell us it'd be stronger to get um 
if we have time to put no, up do. a letter from under my signature to you or a memo from us formally. And if we did that, Tammy, will you help? And um, and if we did that, is that the sort of thing we would want people to vote on saying, yes, please formally follow up as the History Commission on our behalf uh, for this for this project? I would think yes, if you're going to do a formal letter with the uh, under your signature. What do people want to do? I move this is. I move that the history commission write a letter for signature by the chair in support of the um, and offering comments on. Whatever we're calling it. Route 1 BRT. Route 1 BRT. This and this was um, this is the one and, and Greg you should have a look at it too I don't know if you got the um, if you got the, the piece of correspondence so we'll well yeah we all did didn't we yes we all did yeah so anybody so with this in mind um, everybody who is interested in route 1 BRT we're about to vote on it and we're going to pass it and we're going to say that, and, and I'm, I'm not going to write it. Somebody's going to write a letter for my signature. And um, so if, we'll collect all the comments from anybody. So remember that as well in any form. So ha do have a look. Okay, any questions or comments on we the most? Second. We need a second. Bob Beach is seconded. Yeah. So we're good. Comments? We well, um, can I, yeah, uh, and let me just jump in. Uh, so I understand how, how we're approaching this. So um, the the status of this now, and Tammy, you can you can help out too, is that basically the um, uh, what is it? What's the neighborhood called again? The Gum Springs. Gum uh, Springs. Yeah, Gum Springs is is going to be considered eligible as a TCP as a traditional cultural property. No. No, we haven't made that determination. They, they said for the purposes of of this project, it will be considered uh, uh, eligible. Not they're not making any determination of what where it falls under. They, they're oh. just treating it, treating it as eligible. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. And there was, I think, a, uh, Tammy, you had some concern about uh, some structures too. Yeah, they had said that there was no impact on the um, Woodlawn Church that's there, and um, and one drawing said that there was a, a sound barrier, a noise barrier, and another drawing said that there wasn't, and the, my question on that was, you know, how did you make this determination with or without that barrier? I think it just would be good to pin them down because um, there have been instances where they have said different things to different groups. And so really just to get that nailed down is that barrier has to be in place for there to be no impact or or if it's fine without it, just one way or the other to know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so, so let me, returning to Gum Springs though, you know, the evaluation process is based on national register criteria. And the only way you can really determine effect is if you know what criteria apply to a property that appears to be eligible. Mm -hmm. uh, so it seems to me that it's important, it would be important to, to take that analysis a bit further. Um, I get that they're gonna treat it like as a historic property, but then when we get to effect, and that's gonna be important as to whether or not there's a 4F um, on, that, on that particular mm -hmm. property. And let's say it is a TCP, which I think it probably is, then, um, well, then, then, then they're in a 4F. I mean, this is, but, but you know the determination of effect is a, as imp, is an effect that something that affects the qualities that qualified the property for the national register. So they've done the identification, but they haven't done the evaluation sufficiently for us to determine whether or not there's an effect. That's mm -hmm. that's that's one. Uh, um, Denise, so you guys haven't come out with any determination at this point. Is that correct? We have not uh, drafted our memo. No. Yeah. Okay. And the other question I have is, in terms of consulting parties, would uh, we were not invited to be a consulting party, but we can always request to be a consulting party. Is that something that we want to consider? 
I mean, that's pretty, you know, it, usually agencies don't have a problem with people with with organizations wanting to be a consulting party, and and in accordance with the um, resolution that we passed earlier, that Bob the Bob's committee, um, we would let the the board of supervisors know that we, you know, and, and we're de developing policies, but we could go in as a, as our own consulting party on this. I would think. Why why wouldn't we do that? I think that's a valid point. No, then we'd have a separate voice. Yeah, yeah. So I think from the uh, very beginning, FCDOT uh, working with FTA had established this process. Uh, and, and I agree with you, Jordan, at any point uh, in the Section 106 process, anyone can ask to be a consulting party. Uh, but I do know that this this process of incorporating um, history commission in ARB comments under the broader umbrella of staff comments for Fairfax County um, is the way this process was established by FD, FTA and FCDOT. Uh, what was the first group? FHWA, did you say, and FCDOT? Or? No, it's, it's not. It's FTA. It's the. Oh, I'm sorry. Transit. It's oh, yeah, that's transit right. Transit administration, yeah. Well, um, okay, but we still could we still could go that other route, I think, at this point. How how long ago was that? When did we start this? Very. Oh, I, I, I see uh, Barbara raising. This this is the discussion that we had already, and the and in this particular project, we've already been through all this and, and it is it's firm and locked in. So I think the best we can do at this point on this particular project is to send a letter from the History Commission in support of of um, you know our our position and Tammy's if you will do it for for um and because it's not it's it's something that's been going on for I I don't know two years what it is at Denise and so when we've we in love with We've already tried and it was confirmed that in this instance, we and the ARB must go through DPD, period, done. So um, I would like to uh, proceed within the boundaries of where we are. We're still, we still have a voice. We're just not officially a, uh, an independent consulting party at this point in this project. And we've talked about it and done everything we can do and that's where we are. Uh, Denise, am I correct on this? Yes, I mean, you have proceeded under this um, process and under these uh, parameters for the past two years. And, and, now, Jordan is correct that if you wanted to request consulting party status, that's a that's a possibility. Now, that doesn't mean that FTA is going to give it to give you consulting party status um, and. And it does look like you are use midstream changing the change, not change the rule, but changing an accepted process. When I awesome. just say it, I feel like things are going well, I feel like you're being listened to. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Look, I don't um, want to. Um, yeah. Chair, Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, I'll, I also want to add that actually, you know, Jordan um, and, and the rest, uh, we're going through a process to change the bylaws to enact this ability for us to be an independent consulting party, and we don't have that approved yet. It, the bylaws aren't changed, so I think we need to be very careful that if we're working on projects that have an established protocol, that we don't break from that protocol until we get through the process of having the bylaws changed and accepted by the Board of Supervisors, and then whether we have a policy in place for addressing it so that we can um, legally and uh, appropriately um, become an independent consulting party. So we don't really have permission from the Board of Supervisors to do it yet. So that's the second reason why we shouldn't break the protocol of what already has been established over the last two years. Mm -hmm. And as we look at further projects going on in the short term future, um, over the next number of months, say um, six or so, before we can get this established, we need to be sensitive to that issue. It's mm -hmm. a good point. Yeah. yeah. Okay, look, I, 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 um, I'm very, I, I'm sympathetic to what Barbara says, and I'm, I'm willing to go here as long as it's not a 
we understand this is not a precedent because I think that's what we wouldn't want to establish here. But if that's the way this thing has, has gone, then let's move on to the next agenda item and take a vote. <laughs> yeah, and I just well, had one uh, question. Be, oh, go ahead. Well, we should be very, very glad that actually, even in this vein of avenue that we're working, we are being listened to and uh, um, respected. So yeah, um, there's a lot of merit for that. Mm -hmm. um, my one question was, uh, the deadline that we have for our letter to get to Denise uh, putting this package together. We had some. Boy, that just blew up. Yeah. I missed the end of that. Yeah. She just wants to know the schedule. When do you have to get the letter in? Right. So um, let me pull up my notes again. So we are sending our notes in on Friday, September 11th. So if you could, you know. It, 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 they will go attached Friday, September 11th. Okay. Okay. But it's nice for you. It's nice for us to see each other's drafts when possible, because we want to be consistent with, or somewhat consistent with you, and and that. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, it would be helpful to see what staff is going to put forward. Well, I know Tammy that I really appreciate your comments. They they uh, made that you made a good point um, about the sound wall. And what what yeah? What are what are they saying? Is it if, if there's no effect before the sound wall or no effect after the sound wall? Yeah. Yes, I agree. Cool. Uh, thank you so much. In terms of individual comments from commissioners, should they be sent to Tammy then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, did did we end up voting on that? I can't remember. Five minutes ago. We need no. to vote. We need to vote. <laughs> we have a second. We need to Thank vote. You. We have. Uh, we'll call call the question. All in favor of having the history commission under my signature send a letter to Denise for attachment to the comments on the route one. BRT, please say I. I, 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 Opposed and abstains. Okay, the eyes have it. Thank you. Okay. Um, circling back to a few, I'm going to repeat myself because um, commi other commissioners have touched on these items, but I'd like to uh, say that staff appreciates the commission's letter to the chair of the uh, McLean task force in support of keeping the language in the CBC portion of the comprehensive plan, preserving the McLean firehouse, which is listed on the county's inventory of historic sites. As this process process moves forward, I'll keep you updated. Um, I just uh, will occasionally be pulled in to um, consult on, on uh, language or uh, speak with a task force, but I'm not, um, I'm not necessarily following the process very closely, except when I get pulled in, but I'll definitely let you know how, how, it, how it's going. Uh, McMillan Farm, again, um, staff in the History Commission were copied on an email from the SHPO's office to the Army Corps with revisions to the draft MOA which specify including the History Commission as a consulting party in the MOA and as a reviewing party to the memorial installation. And we're waiting for the Army Corps' response to SHPO's uh, request for edits. The SOAP Spectre um, staff was copied in the response email from FHWA to the History Commission's letter requesting an update on the project. I haven't had time to read it, um, so I'm glad that Jordan was able to give you an update on that. <laughs> uh, the Historic Marker Program, um, staff continues to work with the County Attorney's Office on an ownership agreement document to clarify ownership of uh, county historic markers when the donating party is not the landowner. And staff has concluded their research into old proffers for historic markers and, and provided those results to Commissioner Lipsy. Uh, there is the Civil War Monuments at Judicial Complex, the public hearing on the future of the Civil War Monuments at the Judicial Complex will be held on September 15th. 
at 430. At this point, the hearing will take place in person. There, will, there are opportunities for the public to respond by video or phone, and that information should be posted on the board's website. Uh, thank you uh, for those commissioners who reviewed and responded to the National Register nomination for the Bois Doré and McLean. Staff will be submitting our comments this week and we'll include the History Commission's comments um, and, and the ARB's comments to our comments. On a um, related note, the uh, Bull Neck Gold Mine, which is an inventory site, is adjacent to the Bois Doré. And uh, staff was recently contacted by the owner of both properties to suggest a boundary increase in the inventory site for the gold mine. Since this is primarily an archeological site, I forwarded the information um, provided by the owner to Liz Kroll, who, um, and the owner had actually received a, um, uh, an archeological report from Mike Johnson. So that was um, kind of full circle. I sent that to Liz and she and I are planning on visiting the site later this year when the foliage has died back. And I'll keep you and specifically the inventory committee updated with that. And then um, last, there is an opportunity to partner uh, for training. Fairfax City has reached out to the ARB and the History Commission to see if you'd like to partner with them to bring a consultant in to provide a virtual presentation training workshop um, up to three sessions in one day. The cost per session would be $1,167, and they're uh, proposing a date of Friday, October 20. And I've sent this information to the chair, who um, I know she may have some comments about this. And you're on mute. Phone was ringing. Um, uh, thanks, Denise. The, um, there is this uh, training opportunity being talked about, and a few of us had a chance to look at some of the, the topics that this man named Robert Yap would talk about. Um, do we know what topics the ARB and Fairfax City are interested in, Denise? I'm sorry, I don't. I, they, they they reached out to us before giving us anything. I, yeah, it's a uh, just so everyone knows, it's a number of general preservation talks. He's. It looks like this fellow's in one of us. One of them said to be a great keynote talk, the economic benefits of historic preservation and discussions of property rights arguments and talks about uh, the myths surrounding historic preservation. So that would be add to people's ability to encourage the community to do preservation. Some other things, energy efficiency for old houses and buildings. I personally would like that, but you might not. Um, it's a it's a interesting mixture of detailed and not. Uh, there's a thing on old windows. There's a there's a there's a guideline on how to decide what's historic and worth it and what's uh how, there's a uh, one he does on on how to make a successful local historic district um and how to paint it right would work working with contractors uh, so you can see there are a number of generic preservation topics that I think we don't, many of us would be interested in. I know many of us would not. And um, so uh, if we wanted to go in on it, as we see, each seminar costs $1,167. At least I, I ran it by our budget person, and we can look at our budget from last year, and we do have a at least one line item for education and for preservation uh, so we can afford it. Uh, the question is, is it relevant to what we do and would many of us take advantage of it? Um, and it might at least propose, she said, oh, I want 
I wonder if we could pay if any of us went. But, you know, uh, what's going on is that if they want this to happen, they actually need people, I believe, at least, they need people to say, okay, we're ready to pay up to this amount of money because we think these are good topics for our organization. And I'm not sure that we have a good feel for how, I mean, there's a lot of interesting things here, uh, but some of it might be considered preaching to the choir. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to send it around. And um, it's Mary, is that what one I hear, Mary? Yes. Is that one thousand dollars for all of those topics, or one topic? Each topic, each he can he can fit three seminars in one day, okay. and each seminar is for the discounted price of one thousand one hundred and sixty-seven dollars. So it's not inexpensive. Okay. I think we have to call on Barbara because she's actually going to come through the machine into our <laughs> living room. <laughs> uh, Mary sent Mary sent this out, and I said absolutely not. We not have Mary. I mean, Ann sent. I beg your pardon. Ann sent it out, and she did not explain the connection with Fairfax City and what they may be using it for or their structures. I said that we have a historic architect on the commission, Mr. Beach, and that he can share information we want like that and he won't charge us a thousand dollars each. <laughs> this is if is and this is if it's appropriate for anything, it's appropriate for the ARB. So I I was rather um I was not the only one. I hope the other member of the commission will speak next. Yes. yes. And and said, well I hope you all are really speaking your minds because we were both rather passionate about the fact that this is good luck, but it's not it's not our place to be there. So yeah, I I, I, I with the other men, the other member of the commission and um, and independently, Barbara and I arrived at the same conclusion uh, that this is more oriented towards historic architecture, and I really don't think that it it's in our wheelhouse as they say these days. So. Um, I, I I just I don't think it's relevant and I would not support it. All right, Bob, you were with me. Bob, please. yeah, I have one. Okay, I have one. Oh, no, I'm, I'm I have one question. Um, and just a, it's food for thought. Um, since Fairfax City's in, involved in it and interested, um, yeah, I get it. We should be doing something in in the uh, architectural end for um, the public to actually uh, encourage them to. Um, Preserve, uh, but maybe one of those workshops that maybe is an encouragement for preservation. Maybe there it would fit into um, something with the history conference, where we could actually um, get the public educated, which is more along our lines of what we would want. We would not want it to be only shared by 20 commissioners, but 100 history community members for $1,167. Seems like a good deal to me if this topic fits into what we might be doing with the history conference, which needs to be done virtually. I'm sure. So I, I would I would look at it from that standpoint um, and maybe give it some consideration. But you know that's up to Lynn and, and her programming and and the conference um, committee. But it's yeah. just an idea. That's a good one. Yeah. Because yes, okay. it it is a it is a somewhat of a preaching to the choir. We, we believe in historic preservation in this group, um, but, we, but we know our community could use some support. Um, well, and a lot of the people in the community don't really understand the benefits of preservation, and a lot of people look at it as a penalty. And uh, so if there was a good program that could be had that would encourage people to preserve and have a paradigm shift in their thinking, towards that, then we would really be doing our job as commissioners taking um, history out into the public and educating people. And that's one of the things that we're tasked with. So community outreach, education. Anyway, it, that's it, my two style. I'm, I'm off the soapbox. Um, so he, Thank keep, you. Your, keep your eye out for this guy. He, I listened, I, I found something on YouTube with him on it and he was very good. 
Um, my favorite one that none of you in this on this uh, meeting will like is the one called "Old Windows Aren't a Pain, They're a Gold Mine." Isn't that clever? So they're my old windows. Mm -hmm. They're my old windows. Um, okay. okay. So I think. And any, sorry, Bailey, be quiet. Bailey. So um. <laughs> Who let the dog out? <laughs> the, the, this is the fun of Zoom meetings, right? So, um, so what I would say then to is that unless somebody else has a different point of view, this is not an opportunity that we are going to take advantage of. But thank you for sharing it with us, Denise. You are welcome. You know, the only way I shut him up is I, I really turn the collar really strong so he can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We won't report you. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Denise, are you done? I am done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any questions for Denise before we let her uh, go? <laughs> you, she's stuck. All right. Next, we have three. Um, we have three uh, items for Elise. I, she's not here, so I will take them in turn. Uh, the budget, uh, we learned last year that we don't need to report, uh, put the budget uh, letter in such detail. So I believe we'll be able to get that out this month. And, um, and it's very, uh, just very basic information to make sure we get our request in. Uh, the annual report, if you stop it, if you are a chair of a committee and you did not give your calendar year 1919, 2019 uh, information to Elise, she needs it ASAP. We have this deal that we want the annual report out before the Confederate names report. So I think she has a lot of what she needs, but I think she's still missing. So look into yourself and think if you haven't done it. I don't have the list of what she doesn't have, but there is a list. And I'm last, on I'm on it, Anne. I'm on okay. that list. But really get to it because, you know, nobody wants to do this. So we're all letting each other go, you know, do it late. I finally did mine, sort of. Um, and uh, so good. So you know who you are, and if you don't, we'll tell you. And then last on Elise's uh, list is inventory, and she wants to have a meeting in the next couple weeks, if possible, certainly this month. So um, we're sending around uh, some scheduling ideas to the committee once we get a couple of dates off of uh, from um, from. Denise, since she has to run the technology, and uh, so we have some ideas there. Okay, that's that's it for Elise. Next is Markers, Mayor. And, and oh, I'm sorry, yes. I think Bob had a oh. comment. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Bob. I just just yes, just one question. Um, the committee that's dealing with uh, this change to the bylaws is that a 2020 committee, not a 2019 committee? Yes. Okay. Yes. I think that's right. Just yeah, thought I checked. Right. That's right. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, good. So next year. <laughs> okay. You have to do it. Yeah, just we can't forget. Okay. Right. Thank you guys. Um, okay, Mary. Mary, you're on mute. Mary. I'm sorry. Here we are. Um, I just got an email from Sally this afternoon, and she can jump in if she wants to. That Senator uh, Scott, I believe, is asking about getting the historical marker for the nuclear reactor near Fort Belvoir. That's all the information I have. Sally, do you want to add anything? I got an, e an email from State Senator Scott Cervell, and he's been following the, uh, they're taking down the nuclear reactor now. And he thought it would be really good to have some kind of a marker. I'm not sure what markers meant already exist on Fort Belvoir. I know they've been creating a lot of historical markers. Uh, but anyway, it's something to consider. So uh, maybe Mary and I can talk about it some more. That's neat. 
Um, I want to thank Denise in getting us the answers to our questions about uh, the proffers. Uh, and we are working together and independently on these. Uh, and I uh, have asked our committee that we would have a progress report in October. I know that uh, Manny McCoy and I spent three hours in the archives center today working on the Carrolltown historical marker, which is currently standing, but a citizen has said that it's incorrect, and we're working on uh, delving into the Carroll family, the African American Carroll family. And the last thing is that uh, Drew uh, Gruber, Civil War Trails, contacted me, and he was interested in a series of markers. I'm, I don't remember now if it's statewide or just countywide, but identifying the polling places uh, that were used in 1867, which is the first opportunity that African American black men, that's a, a redundant, Black men in Fairfax County were able to vote. This is to be voted for the uh, state convention um, that they were going to have constitution convention. I'm a little tired. Constitution convention. Uh, polling places we're looking to try and find. I mean, I was able to give him the secession vote uh, polling places, but I don't know if they are the same. I have. Um, emailed out to uh, National Archives because the Army conducted the vote. And also I'm going to contact the Library of Virginia, which had an exhibit on this. And in the exhibit, they showed some lists of uh, about three counties in Virginia with uh, the signatures, or, or I shouldn't say signatures, but the names of those who voted. So it sounds like a really neat idea if we can uh, get the information. The reason I bring it up, if anybody has any leads as to where we might find out where these polling places were, it's October of 1867 uh, here in Fairfax County. Um, uh, please let me know. And okay. That's it for the market committee. That's neat. Hey, Mary, this is this is Lynn. Would not the Fairfax Herald have a lot of that information in it? Uh, no, <laughs> the answer is no. I'm not, I've searched. This morning. Okay. Yeah, I've searched the Richmond Dispatch had a huge article, but of course it's all about the Richmond uh, voting. So, um, Chris, I didn't ask you today when I was at the Virginia room if you can perform your magic on this. Um, but um, it's a really interesting story, and if you want to, you know, get online, uh, it's just called um, let's see, African American Vote Remaking Virginia. Transformation through emancipation, et cetera. Anyway, it's virginiamemory.com. That's the Library of Virginia exhibit information. And it's really a fascinating story. And I think it'd be a real nice asset um, to have in the county if we can find the information for it. Wow. Okay, Mary, one one more thing, and, and I really kind of also address this to the rest of the um, history commission. You know, I've been working so hard with the town of Clifton on this Black Lives Matter and our racial justice committee. And one of the things we tossed around early on was our placing one of our commission history markers in town. We don't have one. It would be lovely to have one. It was a desire of Jack Hiller many years ago. Some of the pushback and Clifton is its own reality um, is that there's no markers in Vienna. There's no markers in Herndon. So why do we need to have a marker? So if you guys have any ideas on how helping Clifton bring to the attention of the public the fact that it has a beautiful African American heritage and foundation and a county marker would be a beautiful way to designate that, let me know. And I can maybe work with Mary on that. So. Anyway. You can you can certainly tell them from the point of view of the town of Vienna. We just don't happen to have a county marker, but we'd be happy to. Okay. If if somebody just would do the work, I'd I'd pay half. You know, I just we just haven't we got lots of good ideas. We just you know like so many things you don't get around to it. Sure. But there's no Vienna town policy, and and I don't know that there's a county policy. 
And uh, I don't think Herndon has one either, uh, Anne. Um, yeah. So well, anyway, we can, the history is there. We right? can change that. I want to do one for Moorfield. I've always wanted to. I just never got off my chair to go do it. Well, you have Harp and Salisbury, who was a great supporter of the African American. Absolutely. And all yeah. that. So that's a dual story there that could be told. And some pretty good Orin, uh, Orin Hine, reasonably, not nearly as. You know what, ladies, just so I don't take up any more time, if you guys could send me a few bullets to that, I'd like to be able to go back to Clifton and say, hey, this is something we're all looking at right now. Here are the other towns, in fact, are interested. Wouldn't it be great, Clifton, if you could take the lead in doing something like this? I mean, I think that that might have yeah, been. Yeah, let's do that. Some of the, um, because there's a perfect location for it. Our racial justice committee is all over it, but there's apparently a few town council people that are um, town council people doing what they think is their job. Okay, okay that's all I need. Thank to you. Say. Thanks. Anything more in markers? Nope, that's it. Okay, thank uh, you. Ms. Mary, it's Craig. Have you seen Brian Conley's Return to Union, Fairfax County's role in the adoption of the Virginia Constitution of 1870? No, I have not looked at that. Uh, it's got all the voting broken out by whites and coloreds by districts and, and numbers. Oh, and what's, what's the title yeah, again? It, it's uh, Brian Conley's book called uh, Return to Union, Fairfax County's Role in the Adoption of the Virginia Constitution of 1870. Okay, because I was using Fractured Land by Brian Conley for the 1861 secession votes. Okay. Yeah, no, this is a uh, follow on. Quite I'll well done. Get, I'll get a copy of that. Good. Okay. Thank you. Good. Brilliant minds in, uh, inspiring each other. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Um, okay, good. Then, Esther, ethnic and oral history. Yes, thank you. The Ethnic and Oral History Committee met on August the 20th, 7 p.m. Uh, we had, uh, we called to order shortly after seven, and of course went through the script and the roll call and so forth. Attending were Ann Stunts, Barbara Peters, Lynn Garvey Hodge, Cheryl Rapetti, Esther, and absent members were Sally and Barnes, Greg and Tammy. And if I've gotten your name by mistake, let me know. We talked about uh, five retired supervisors that we want to interview. And Ann Stunts will contact the clerk of the court to find their contact information so that when we're ready, we can uh, reach out to them and set an appointment. Lynn and Esther will go over the questions for both the community interviews and the supervisor interviews. Those will be two sets of questions. We would welcome staff and other citizens to interview. And there was a, a suggestion that we also invite uh, a person that might have worked with the supervisor if they would like to be in the interview to participate. Channel 16 with Pam Gardner has been very busy now that they've gotten back into the swing of things, so it's hard to get communication, but I did send her a note and leave her a voicemail, and we're looking to find out the dates, the possibilities in the future. Uh, community groups, we talked about doing uh, something for community groups to be able to interview and uh, as a training thing. We put that on hold until we can get these other interviews done and mention uh, that a producer was used by her family for a finished product. Uh, we're gonna look at that, but right now we're talking about commissioners interviewing and volunteers if there are some. 
The next meeting is October 15th, 7 p.m. We'll have a call. And the motion to adjourn was made by Lynn. And after a second, it was unanimously agreed on. We closed at 8.30. And that is the end of my report. I'll get that over to Winifred. Thank you. Any questions for Esther? One. Right. I have one. Okay. Um, Esther, uh, you know, I was just thinking, I know you're doing the Board of Supervisors. It's a large task, and I, I applaud you for that. Um, but always thinking a little bit further ahead, um, there might be some park authority, um, uh, Fairfax County Park Authority employees that would want to be added to the list after you get the Board of Supervisors done. And Mike Ryerson comes to mind at first, but there might be others. Just uh, wanted to kind of plant the seed uh, for thinking um, that, that a person like Mike Ryerson would just have lots of information about county history um, and so forth. So just a thought. Absolutely. A wealth of okay. information. Thank you so yeah, much so for that. On the list. You can get him after the supervisors. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, Bob, you're next. Resident curator. Okay. Well, I'm ready. Um, let's see. I'm going to try and give you a, a Chris Barbershack report here. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> anyway, well, um, uh, uh, the curator pro program is moving right along. Um, Upcoming projects uh, at the Hannafy Clark and Yeti properties include interior painting. The final meeting of the Lost Leahy evaluation team was held via Zoom on Wednesday, uh, September 2nd, so that was this morning. The team reviewed the uh, application against the RCP scoring criteria and determined the additional information is required uh, for the applicant uh, on items such as rehabilitation work plan and schedule. So that's going to be updated, I guess. And pending receipt of, of the materials from um, from the applicant, the evaluate, evaluation team will reconvene to finalize application scores and make a final determination. So that's upcoming and soon. Um, we're moving along. I'm, just bear in mind that for many months to do COVID-19, we didn't meet until we got some Zoom stuff going on here, so it's great. Uh, planning and development uh, staff are drafting an RCP lease for the service source at Elmore Farmhouse upon uh, BOS approval. Um, the lease service source will submit its special exception application for its uh, proposed nonprofit use of the site. Um, the RCP lease commencement will uh, be contingent on um, the SE approval. So. That's, that's moving along and going in the right direction. Uh, the curator uh, at Turner Farmhouse continues with improvements. Oh my gosh, come on, screen. Don't go away on me. <laughs> <laughs> it went black. Bear with me. It's gone to sleep, Wake which is up. you know what we will do. There you go. All right. Um, um, upcoming projects at the Stempson House include the master bedroom renovation and finishing painting of interior trim. And the staff is working with park operations to install, install electricity at Baird House um, and uh, site preparations for installation of specialized septic system are underway. So those are the properties that are moving forward at this point. And I'm, I'm really happy that the, uh, that the La Leahy Lost Valley House is, is, is pushing forward. So, um, and, and same with Elmore Farmhouse. I mean, that's really pretty cool. These, these are projects that I think uh, will really help the program blossom. So. Um, you know, with success, and so I'm, I'm happy about it. So, any questions? I'm open for questions. Anybody? All right, thank you, Bob. You're welcome. Ann Barnes bylaws. This is Ann Barnes. Um, I don't have anything to report. However, I do plan on having a meeting this month with my bylaws committee. Great, thank you. I would like to, uh, I guess, get the information from, from you, Bob. So uh, I'll, you'll sure. be hearing from okay. okay, that sounds good. Yeah. All right, thank you. And the we'll, other place we'll, we'll to look ahead. for it, um, it's hiding in the minutes. Um, okay. The minutes for the, for the 
Consulting Parties Task Force. So it's it's posted on our website, and it's right. got the it's got the motion and the recommendation. Right. Okay. Right. Good. Okay. Thank good. You. If you want, Thank I can you. send you a copy, Anne. Do you want me to send you a copy? Um, I could find it in the the okay. minutes online. But or on the website, anyway. yeah, it's right under there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. You bet. Um, thanks, guys. Um, next is history conference and awards. Lynn. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much. A um, couple of dates for um, you all to be aware of. We just met on the 27th of August. Our next meeting, and I know Denise has this in person already, is the 9th of September. 7:30, and we've gotten our WebEx all squared away on that already. So that's um, that that piece of information. So last week when we met, we actually got a tremendous amount done, and I have to do a big shout out to our Mary Lipsy who did a yeoman's job of summarizing and sending on to me the many questions that we have for the kind of administrivia details that we're going to need to encounter with uh, Channel 16. I'm I'm getting over a concussion right now, guys, and I'm. If there's moments I'm doing okay, and there's other moments it's like, oh, God, uh, you know, this isn't going away. So, and the moment I'm in the wow. moment I'm doing okay, I was Ouch. yucky today, and I, in fact, I went to Anova's uh, concussion center. So, really, really appreciate Mary's summary. Um, so, we're working with Channel 16 on that in terms of their restrictions. Um, can we do rehearsals? Can we use more than one studio? A lot of very basic um, coordination that would need to happen for a live stream. So we're, we're working on that. And then I had put together kind of a mock agenda for uh, the conference. And is Sally Lyon still on here? Sally, are you still with us? Sally, Sally. Yeah, Sally. I'm still here. Wonderful. Sally, you had told me at one point in time beyond Alice Reagan that you knew of a couple of other people that might want to participate here. Um, if you and I could have a short conversation about that, I do not want anybody in the county to be left out. I know folks from Loudoun. I know folks from Prince William would like to participate as presenters. But right now we've got a pretty full agenda. And if there are folks in our county that want to be uh, a participant presenter, I would really like to know about that. So. Right now, it looks like we will be having two sessions on the 14th of November. We will not be doing anything as we had originally planned on Sunday the 15th. Uh, it will all be virtual uh, from 10 until about, um, gosh, what did we eventually decide on? About 12 or 12.30. And then that window of time between 12, and 12 or 12.30 and then the time we start in the afternoon. Yeah, we said 12.30. Okay. Um, we may be showing some of the videos from the Suffragist Museum and, and get with um, Kanina and Lori uh, McKee and the other ladies out there. I know they're very proud of their, their videos and they are in fact wonderfully educational. Mm -hmm. And then we'll start in the afternoon with taking a look at the African American suffragist. We believe that's a really nice powerful uh, topic that hasn't been included in a lot of other suffragist literature. We have um, tangentially to that changed the title of the conference now to be votes for women, the rest of our story, and then a subtopic or subtitle rather of passing the 19th amendment. Um, we've got Cipriana McCray, who is president of the Reston Dulles uh, Negro Council of Women, and I've got a call in and Esther, I might need your support on this too. They did uh, the Delta Sigma Theta folks called me back, but called me back to give me another number to call back. So uh, I may need to have you run a little interference for me, but the sure. president of Delta Sigma Theta uh, would be part of that too. We need to figure out how to do graphics. We need to figure out how to do PowerPoints. Um, there's a lot of little details that need to be done. And I think, team, is that it for my, our meeting next week? Anything else, anybody? Okay. Oh, we do have a PowerPoint that I have forwarded on to you from Cipriana so you can see a sense of what she is planning to present for us at, at the conference. Okay, on to awards. Um, if there's nothing else to, to say here uh, about the conference. Um, oh, oh, one thing I did want to say about the conference. The um, 
time during breaks and so forth will include um why is this up here? I have no idea where that's up. But it's something on my screen. I don't know what is why it's up. Um, there we go. Um, to have the logos and the information of all the local history groups on the screen so that as we take a five minute or 10 minute break, they can be reminded of the Bull Run Roundtable. They can be reminded of, you know, Historic Center Ball, all the other groups. And because we're not going to have our um, our exhibit time this year, so we're um, we're considering that too. Um, Cheryl, anything else that I'm I'm missing here? You're always really good with detail. Any, anything else? Yeah. That, that yeah. counts like everything. Oh, okay. Well, you didn't close it out. You said we break uh, at twelve thirty. Yeah. And then come back. At two, two. is that oh, I oh. think we're missing, and then it would be over at three thirty or four. Three, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for for uh, the finale there. Absolutely. You're I right. was um, I was looking at the conference for the American Association of State and Local History. That's uh, I think that's the one I was staring at, mm -hmm. and it was uh, it's a virtual conference, and it looks real interesting. And um, and they kept talking about, and this is. This includes your Brad, Brad brown bag lunch and your breakfast. And I'm like, what is that? I wonder if they're. Um, I wonder if they're going to have time for participants to talk to each other or breakout rooms or stuff like that. Because some of these platforms we use can support mm -hmm. oh, yeah, um, yeah. social social or discussion time. Right. So that might be fun to to see if there's any ability to do that with with um, because it's it's very right now it feels very one way, doesn't it? It yes, it, it is. Yeah, yeah. Extreme is one way, and and I I question that too. And we did talk about this, and this is one of our questions to Pam: is how are we going to do a question and a? How are we going to do a Q and a? So uh, I don't have the answers for that. I do know like as in Zoom, we do those um, breakout sessions. There's probably not any way to do that with live stream, but yeah. we can we can certainly explore something similar. Yeah, and um, so I think too, as all of us are going through life being offered all these webinars and conferences and stuff, maybe we can be picking up some hints along the way for, and just feed them right straight to the committee and say, well, here's what I learned that Vam is doing, and here's what I learned what so and so is doing because because it's would hard. It's I hard. Would love that. I would yeah. absolutely love that. Okay, That'd be great. That'd be fantastic. I know the committee would appreciate it too. Thanks, Ann. Okay, on to awards. This is really a quick summary of what we talked about last month. All of the award committee people have um, gotten back to me Greg, Steve, Elise, and uh, Jordan. Uh, and, um, Cheryl, Cheryl, are you on this committee too? I've got your name here, so. I'm not sure, Lynn, you keep drafting me on committee. So. <laughs> You're so popular. Um, okay, so last month I mentioned that we had uh, a self-nomination from Tody Carnes, the Mount Hundley View Shed video, which is actually phenomenal. They use it at Mount Hundley, Huntley, and uh, I think the, the rest of the team has had a chance to see it. I somehow was able to figure out how to forward all of that good stuff. Um, and then Greg uh, Wilson has nominated Heather Bollinger and Katrina Krampaski for Distinguished Service Awards. Um, Mayo, the Mayo Stunts Award is the one that uh, Tody has self nominated herself for. And then also Carol Herrick has nominated Marianne Hampton, John Ryan, and the Shaw's Village 50th Anniversary Committee for Distinguished Services Award. So the only award that would involve mon uh, a monetary uh, amount would be the Mayo Stunts Prize. The entire committee has voted yay on all of this, and the entire Higher committee, I think at least you're on this too, has said yes that the way the awards can be announced will be just with a real short verbal announcement at the kickoff of the conference. 
we won't have people come in. There won't be the distribution of actual award plaques, but we will name names and um, include that in the, in the footage of the day. So I think that's pretty much it. At this point in time, awards committee, the only thing I'll be needing to get out to you will be the verbiage that will be on the individual plaques which will be similar to what we'll get read at the conference. So I don't see a need for a meeting, at least at this point in time. Okay. Good. Hey Lynn. Lynn, I do have a question for you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, which is uh, with regard to the uh, presentation of the Hiller Award on the website. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I need some feedback on that. Oh, you know what? I'm embarrassed to say I haven't taken a look at it. How do you think it looks? What's your image? <laughs> I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm you're fine. You're fine with it. Yeah. Did I, get, did I hear that correctly? Yeah. So, so, so what I did was, so it's just, you know, it will be presented on the website uh, proper, you know, the main page, the way along with a simple paragraph, the way the other awards are presented. Okay. Fine. We will also have a the, the we, what I was su suggesting was that we modify the um, the the format of the award application form in order to incorporate all that legalese that the photography, you know, award. Right, we got the, the county attorney, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that was just my suggestion so that all of that doesn't clutter the website itself. The page. Yeah. But it could be a separate link then for the Jack Hiller Award. Click here for that application. Can we do that? We could separate them out if you prefer to have a. I think so step. because the copyright issues seem to be and the, the timing issues were so um, important in the Jack Hiller Award. Okay, that, I could do it that way too. Okay, that sounds like a plan. All right, all right, good. guys. I think that's it. Thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, thanks, you guys. That's good. Good information, Lynn. Mary Lipsy, Cemetery Preservation. Mary, Mary, we can't hear you. Here I am. I'm sorry. Um, I'm getting more requests for information about cemetery preservation. I have three DAR chapters uh, that want me to either come to a cemetery or come uh, demonstrate uh, cleaning of markers, etc., or speak. And then I have two scouts that. Uh, are wanting to work on Eagle Scout projects. So all together about five different groups uh, continuing with the idea of the cemetery preservation. And I'm just wondering if Liz or whomever has any inf information about our MOU that the county has. I have no information currently, but I will ask in my meeting on Monday. Well, actually it won't be Monday, it'll be Tuesday. Right, and the, the other, DAR is, is continually asking about Francis Summers. I know you're working on that too, and that's what I'm telling them. Um, I do have one piece of information, and we can talk about this further offline. Okay, that's um, okay. As long as we, for the marker that would go up or the plaque, as long as we can review the content, there's no issue. But if they want to go out and do things in that cemetery, Okay. If they want to go out and do things in that cemetery, um, it's been asked that they become a PVT park volunteer team. Okay. That sounds that sounds like a good one to take off online. Okay. And that is right online. And I apologize for Chloe. <laughs> yeah. But I can find um, that online, right? The, for the park authority. The PVT. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So if you want, Jerry, if you want to call me tomorrow morning for more details, you're welcome. Well, I, I'm I'm on I'm on that team also, so I'll just so good. find the information. But I also have told them that the marker from beginning to end has got to go through the park authority. Yes. Especially yeah. if they want to do their own DAR marker, which is what they would right. like to do. Where's Where's this going to be? This is in the Francis Summers Cemetery. He was a American Revolutionary Patriot. It's on Lincolnia Drive Road. Uh, I've forgotten. It's on Lincolnia. Um, my question is, since there's already a plaque there put there by a previous DAR chapter calling him a soldier, and newer research says he is a patriot, 
if I have to involve the other chapter and say, hey, there's a marker going to be up there that uh, going to correct your. Sounds like a cemetery committee issue. Yeah, yeah. If it's DAR, Mary, I'm fairly certain that you have to do that. I would think so. Yes. so I'm going to approach that all with the, the DAR chapter who's requesting it. And we will work through that. As they, they, they should be notified. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Uh, anything new on advocacy, Carol? No, not until we're finished with the virus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, moving along to commission member reports. Elise isn't here, but Cheryl is. Website? Sorry, but. Uh, uh, distracted there for a second. Um, so no, no, nothing new to report on the um, on the website. Uh, thanks to um, Lynn for that update. Now we can move forward on that. Okay. Um, Good. Also, yeah, we we've put books onto the website. I I did a quick check on that Brian Conley book. I don't know how much future is, but it looks like it's in rather short supply. That might be a really cool resource to put on our website. So that's something to investigate. We had at one time with the marker and the Confederate names and it was on some agenda discussed whether we need to review the driving trail that we put up there for the, during the sesquicentennial, which has a lot of visits at Confederate stops around the county. I don't know how to handle that or just to, um, that, that, that's a question. It's on the website, so it's not really Cheryl's responsibility. It just made it reminded me that we did a driving trail for the 150th sesquicentennial of question and answers and taking them around. I think it's about 30 stops around the county. I was looking at that the other day too, Mary. Um, it might be that the folks who made that originally, Gretchen's and her committee, was it? Was it that? Um, might want to have a fresh look at it with uh, it with 2020 eyes. Okay, because uh, Patrick Lennon and I actually ran the road and talked the route. Uh, but Gretchen, what do you think? I think it's revisiting. All of that stuff needs to be looked at through a new lens. Yeah. So what's yeah. what's the process? I think that's just a, an internal look, right? I mean, we created that as a committee. Okay. Do you want to? Um, do you want your old committee to kind of go back to it and look at it fresh, or you want to start a new group? What would be the best way to move forward with specific assignments? I don't think we could get the old committee back and neither do I think members of that committee would want to see the current document altered. So if this is a commission assignment. I think we should just make up a committee to reassess, um, you know, past programs and things that are on the website. I don't think it'll take us very long to look at it once we focus on it. I think you're right. Can that go under the marker umbrella just because it is kind of like stops through the county? Does that make sense or is that not realistic, Mary? No, no every stop is at a marker. Okay, so let's make it a marker and marker committee and anybody else who wants to work on it. I was chair of that committee, so I mean, I can sit on, I can help you, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. My list for doing the heavy lifting. Yeah. And it's a wonderful and, thing. And this is Barbara Naif. Um, I actually, um, in seeing, looking um, at Mary's notes from the very beginning of the CNC, I put that down today as something that we might want to put in the bibliography oh. um, of the of the report, even though, um, Again, it's it's the markers are all going to be noted in the marker inventory, but the fact that this existed, I think, would be something that we might want to add to the bibliography at the end of the report. So I'm now passing that on to you as a first consideration, Antonise. <clears throat> so we need to have this 
uh, assessed before the inventory with the inventory. Doesn't have, I mean, it's, it can be just like the brochure. It's an artifact in a way. It's something that was okay. at that time, but it was done. Um, so it's important, I think, to, but, you know, be part of the record. Okay. Yeah, well, I think that's good. Gretchen, we can hear enough, you and I, and maybe even Patrick, who was involved with the actually driving with me through it and get his opinion on it. Is there anything yeah. else? I think that'd be good. That'd be okay. great. Yeah, thanks, you guys. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's it for commission member reports. Before we get to announcements, I'm just going to go over a little bit of mail. Um, I forget about mail. Um, the uh, we got hard copy of the letter from Clifton saying that they've looked at our looked at their Confederate names. We got a hard copy of the letter from the Historical Society of Fairfax County saying they'll help us in any way they can. Thank you, Chris. We got a nice letter from Turning Point Memorial saying thank you for your generous contribution of $2,000 on April 1st to the Turning Point Suffragist Memorial. Uh, we got a really cute note from the Franconia Museum that um, talks about their new mascot, Freddie Frankie Franconia. Frederick Franklin Franconia. And it sounds adorable. And uh, Stephen Phyllis, you'll have to tell us about that. We got hard copy of our budget request and we have oodles of um, cell tower stuff. And so keep, keep an eye out on your inbox. You'll get a copy of this piece from Steve or from me over the next few days. And uh, there was one other thing. Oh, uh, we got the official note. You probably know this already, but celebrate Fairfax. Celebrate Fairfax is canceled or just. That's too soon to know that. I'm going to read the email again while you guys are doing announcements. Celebrate Fairfax had, was trying to switch to October, so they may have finally decided not to do it. That must be what it is. Thank you. But I'll look at it while while us uh, if there's some announcements. All right, let's just go around the room. Speak up if you have something to say. Um, I'll go first. Um, Mrs. Robert Walker headed the Loudoun County uh, Suffragist 100th anniversary celebration uh, live streamed and uh, it was the, the whole event was quite a success. I found a lovely videographer. If you guys ever want to know of a lovely lady who we used a real film studio, she did my makeup and so forth for the work. Um, just did a fantastic job with that. Um, and so that is, is coming up and then continued work on uh, racial justice uh, realities within the town of Clifton, which golly, it just breaks my heart to see how that topic could possibly have people with extreme perspectives, but there are. That's all I'll say about that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? I have sure. two announcements. Um, this is Ann Barnes. I, I'm sorry, did I cut somebody else off? It's no. okay. It's only Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bob, if you don't mind, I'll be very quick. No, the, um, not a problem. Uh, supervisor of the of um, oh, Mount Vernon District, Dan Stork, um, held a Centennial Women's Equality Day uh, 2020 on um, the 26th of August, and um, he invited me to be a speaker. So I spoke. <laughs> And, and I spoke about the usual list of suspects, um, uh, the, the uh, list of suffragists who were involved in seeing that day happen, uh, or who contributed to seeing that day happen, um, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, uh, Susan B. Anthony, Lucretia Mott, Lucy Stone, and Anna Howard Shaw. Uh, my twist on it was to also offer some more names that 
many don't get to hear much about. Uh, Lynn, you'll be interested in this. Um, and they were um, uh, Francis Ellen Watkins Harper, Mary Ann Shad Carey, Mary Church Terrell, yes. Nanny Helen Burroughs, yes. and Ida B. Wells. Nice. So, nice. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a good day. We had about maybe uh, because we had to be socially um, distanced and all that. Um, I would estimate less than maybe 70 people were there, but wow. we had a, as, as could come, and they came and they enjoyed themselves. Our, our guest speaker, though, uh, for that event was um, a former presidential candidate, um, Carly Firiani, Fiorina. Fiorina, right. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it was a good day. <laughs> and in person? Yes. That, that's so neat. And that's actually, she's a neighbor of mine. She lives down the street from me. Not <laughs> next door, but she lives closer to the water's edge. Fabulous. <laughs> what a nice event. Thank you. Good, good job. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Bob, I saw you waving your arm around. Yeah, yeah well, in, you know, in the same uh, event of, um, of life here, uh, you know, with the Women's Month and the suffragist uh, centennial being on the 26th, um, Carly did attend a webinar that they had with three other women, and uh, that's been recorded. I think you can catch that if you want, and I believe it's on the uh, uh, suffragist memorial website. There's also three other videos that they created. One was done by Valerie Bay. Um, that's what a professional job. That was on the subject of us receiving the White House fence uh, as an artifact you know, to be placed in the memorial. And uh, the others are more about the memorial. And, and a lot of important people spoke. And it was great with the, the um, I encourage you to go on the website and just watch them. There are a, a minute long or less. Um, uh, or roughly that, so uh, it won't take long, but they're done very nice and they're very informative. So I'm in one of them out of the three, but that's okay. Um, anyway, I, it's, I encourage you to do that. They, they did it the best they could with the fact that we couldn't convene and, and have a real ribbon cutting of any kind. So um, that will come later. They'll just do it later when we're allowed to, to, to gather. Right. So, yeah, um anyway. Chairman Chairman McKay had that on his site, and I went and watched, and I wanted to compliment you, Bob, because there you were, Edith Mayo and all these. It was great fun, and it was really nice. So I saw two, the two of them were on, were on his site. So very glad he did that. So, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, Thank you. Yeah, so it's been a great project to be involved in. So it's, been it's fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Well, re well represented there. Any other um, announcements? I'm just looking at the Celebrate Fairfax. Uh, during the last 40 years, blah, we created experience, enabled millions to celebrate Fairfax. Due to ongoing concerns, we regret to inform you we're not producing Celebrate Fairfax Festival or Fall for Fairfax in October 2020. So that's what that's about. That's not a surprise. October might be tough. But we'll see each other October 7th, hopefully. Anything uh, else? Yes. Uh, yes, Steve Sherman here. I got a couple of things. You mentioned Subway Fairfax. You know, as a former board of directors, you know, you have the, the, the event in, the, in June, and the one in September, October is called Fall for Fairfax. And that's a, like a two day event held where the governmental center is. It's more primarily for children. So obviously, you can see why they canceled that out. And then also for the Franconia Museum, you mentioned uh, Freddie Franconia. This is something new that we have. We spent about $1,000 or so for uh, for a costume for a mascot. And somebody has to be in that costume, has a big head, and it looks like a farmer type of thing, sort of a cartoon that character so that, that we would take to uh, schools and sort of an access if somebody was doing a, a speaking engagement about Franconia. And that would be that will come along to attract people and children and so forth also. And the other thing I like to mention also, if people hadn't heard about it, uh, that the former county supervisor, Joe Alexandra, 
uh, passed away just in the last couple of days or so. He was the longest running county supervisor in the Lee District for 35 years. And he was very, uh, very instrumental in getting the metro and then the, uh, the uh, Springfield Metro stop area is, is named after him too. So that's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah, very cool. No. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else among us? All right, well then let's uh, call this meeting adjourned and um, and everybody have a good month. We'll see each other at various meetings throughout. Um, otherwise, we'll see you October 7th, and we will all be done with the major part of our uh, of our our Confederate report. We will dump it all on Denise's lap, and she will magically make it beautiful. Mm -hmm. Jordan, did you hear that? <laughs> That's how it works. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Nice. Oh, and next okay. and next month, let's everybody log on a little bit sooner because we can look at us. We're not. The, this isn't the worst we've ever done. No. At nine twenty-five, but you figure at least fifteen of that was just trying to get get people in and mm -hmm. and on online. So, um, can I make? You're muted. You're muted. You just muted yourself. I'm sorry. I'm wondering if there's any way the day of Denise can re send a link because otherwise it gets lost back there. I don't know. Let me ask that and see if that's yeah. a possibility. The chair sent it out. And, and well, and Denise sends it too. Yes. Uh, Denise sent it 10 days ago. Well, 12 days ago. Um, it's Who funny. Sent it with the agenda. Yeah, so Anne did send it with the agenda like mm -hmm. yeah, days ago. I think. I couldn't However, the one the one that came with the agenda would not let me in. The, yes. one, came the, one, the, the one that came from Denise directly let me in. Okay. And I was among others that started early, but I couldn't get in. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it was just a mixed up night for good old WebEx is I think part of the problem. It might be there's yeah. no answer. It might be there's not much of a good answer. But, well, um, I think, I, I think Lynn, it, Lynn does have a point. Um, I did this for the conference committee, um, but please, if anybody wants, yeah, I don't mind if I get 20 reminders, it's fine. Try to remind me <laughs> to okay. send out the reminder because um, I, I, re I just went to WebEx, I resent the invitation and I think every we didn't have any trouble getting people on conference committee call last week. So I do uh, I do understand we had quite we had about nine people that couldn't get in to to begin with. So that was a that's a big step. Yeah. So if we can if that would solve it, that would be good. It does always take. Yes, in those ten days or so in between. It gets so far down in your inbox and you can search. Like I say, one of my one of my computers, one of my iPad pads, I can search for the word invitation and I get it pretty fast. But my other one just cranks away and gives me the 2017 answers to the question. I search Denise Webex. That's what I search. Yes. I yes. It didn't work. It didn't Webex. It didn't work that's what it's me. And I want you all to know, I was freaking 15 minutes early tonight. I'm so, so proud of myself. Tammy, you don't know me well enough to know that that's an absolute miracle. So. <laughs> so I'm going right. to put a calendar reminder on my calendar to send out the WebEx meeting invitation again on the day. Um, it's just it's out of sync and I have a lot going on right now. Um, so um, I forgive me if I drop the ball, but I will try to do that. We'll, try, we'll all try to remember. Bob, did you have something? Uh, yeah, I was going to say if you send it as an invitation to the calendar, then if you click on it, then and all the information goes in as an appointment mm -hmm. on your calendar. Then you open we, up the appointment on the calendar and all the login information is there. So if there's a way to do that. We have different calendars, Bob. Yeah. Not everyone, uses, not everyone uses calendars.
but if that but if that does help a few people that's that's a few fewer Thank people to, to mess up okay well, if you use outlook it could be done yeah searching on the word webex is is you know, because it, it really isn't underneath denise's name mm -hmm. it's under a webex name and that that's probably the most effective way of finding the invitations if you're looking at and they can't be transported you can't you can't like forward it on to somebody else. You have to have that original link. Right. That's right. Yeah, that's part of its problem, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Well, it sounds like um, we've solved it all. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and, and yeah. Yeah. I want you to tell, tell you to fix your blinking light, blinking clock behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Turn around. Turn around. 947? What is that? Yeah, it's her, her, her clock is just blinking away. Yeah, it's, it's been 221. It was 221 a minute ago. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I thought, it was an, I thought Mary was using an expletive. Fix your blinking clock. <laughs> Not Mary. Not Mary. Between the clock and the dog, Mary, we've been entertained. <laughs> I could move over like this. You know? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. Well, wow, there's well, there's just many more embarrassing things than that in life, right? Yeah. <laughs> we won't go there. We won't even go there. Yeah. All right, you guys. Okay, bedtime. Good night, Good night. 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 Okay. Yeah, me too. Thank you, Denise. Okay. Bye, -bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bye. Yeah,